Hi, hello, and welcome to the Lunar Lounge brought to you by Vertex of Abundance. My name is Serene Pieces of Lusty. I'll be your oracle today, and I was sent to deliberate the findings for the new moon in Libra. It's coming up pretty soon. We're a little late to the party here. Six of Wands. We're going to be deliberating the findings from Nadi Anna. We're going to be deliberating the findings from this is the tattoo tarot. I don't actually know the name. I believe it's Diana Colas. I'm pretty sure it is. I've arrived on that name a few times. It's not clear to me. So we're just gonna continue. So we'll be deliberating the findings from the Tattoo Tarot, and we will be imposing the guidance from Nadia Anastasia's Cosmic Activation Card for the Soul. This is for the New Moon in Libra. We got 10, Compassion. And that's a very Libra thing to see both sides of the veil, to see both sides of the situation, to be impartial or balanced. It can lead to being of two minds, X, Y, Z, L, N, O, P, A, B, C, T, U, V, E, F, G, F, you know. But there's more. Having the capacity to be detached or having the capacity to be impartial because we all kind of make mistakes and we have compassion for people because we recognize they're not always their behavior, yes. Behavior comes from decisions, choices, actions, et cetera. However, we need to be able to separate the person from their behavior. Doesn't mean we tolerate said behavior. It just means that there's usually more going on than meets the eye. And compassion is love in action. Compassion is an action word. It's love in action. I don't care what the dictionary says. That's what I'm espousing today. And with the six of wands, it would be self-compassion. Love and compassion towards each other start with love and compassion towards oneself. That's by Nadi Anastasia here. Love and compassion is the sacred essence of all that is. It embraces us without condition or judgment and assists us to grow and evolve into higher states of conscious awareness. This card has come to you as a reminder that true compassion starts with you. Learn from your experiences, even the most challenging, and forgive yourself for experiences that may have caused suffering. Carrying the weight of internal judgment only brings pain and suffering, but when you have compassion and love towards yourself, forgiveness expands towards others around you. Forgiveness, oh, excuse me, forgiving another can be the hardest test of all, especially when the hurt they have inflicted has cut deep and the buried runes and emotions resurface. It is natural to want to react with spite, bitterness, and rage. It is even more natural to want to put up walls of protection from further pain. But when walls around one's own heart But when walls surround one's own heart, they help growth and the ability to manifest a reality of choice. Dear one, if you have found yourself in the predicament of unforgiveness or having to forgive, know that this is your time to react differently. Choose forgiveness, love and compassion. Do not close your heart and build walls that does not serve you. It takes you further away from your truth. Choose love. It is through love that others will come to see themselves with more light. This does not mean that you should stay in a situation where you are being mistreated 
or where the boundaries have been crossed, especially repeatedly, you can move away from a situation that does not serve your higher good with love and compassion still in the heart. Affirmation, I am filled with thoughts of gratitude, compassion, forgiveness, and love associated chakras of the heart chakra. And this is by Nadi Anastasia's, Anastasia's Cosmic Activation Cards for the Soul. I'm getting a lot of self-forgiveness right now. So let's talk about forgiveness just right quickly. Because forgiveness is about compassion. Souls are here waking up and returning to source energy. And there's lots of different things that happen in this process. And what we don't want to do, what we should try to avoid is becoming miserly and bitter. Because after that, we become evil, sinister, and wicked. Now, between miserly and bitter and evil, evil, sinister, and wicked, there's all this illusion, delusion, confusion. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. The people who choose hell typically thought they were choosing their happiness. So oftentimes, we get stuck in the middle of wanting to assign blame, wanting to make somebody other, wanting to make somebody wrong, wanting to make somebody bad, or others doing that to us. And a lot of times, we get disconnected. So without talking too much about it, let's just jump. Let's jump in really quickly. Let's get to the, the end of the, the narrative, the story here. The trick is to understand that if they could do better, they would be, do better. Even demons, even intentionally evil people, they need our compassion because they think they're on the right path. The thing about demons is they're very powerful and they're very smart, but it's a single intelligence. It's not very reflective. It's not very open. Because if they could think better, do better, if they knew better, they would choose better. What does that mean? Even those who are choosing evil, choosing to harm, choosing to lie, cheat, steal, choosing to affect the destinies of others, that's the best they could do. They need compassion because they're in the dark. If somebody's hard, harming us, hurting us, they need compassion because they're in the dark. Sometimes we completely cut them out of our life like a bad cancer with surgical st scalpel. Sometimes we need to be ruthless, tactical, surgical, brutal with our boundaries. Sometimes we need to come hard, come harder, stand on business, pull through, come through. It's true. But the thing is, in our heart, if we step out of forgiveness, we're stepping out of that God energy. We need to forgive every single person who harmed us because we don't know the path that they're on, the medicine they bring, the journey that they're walking in this lifetime. We don't know the purpose of that experience. They might have needed to play the villain in our story. They might, not, they might have needed to be that, I call it negi negi, that, that negative entity, you know, the, the, the bendeja, the putana, the, the bastardo, you know, they might have needed to be that malinconia, malangrosa, you know, they might, have, they, they might have needed to do that. Negrita, you know, who knows? You know, who knows what the Lord was planning, you know, for a really divine being like ourselves watching here, the priestesses, the steers, at least the chosen ones. A lot of times when an enemy harms us, they're getting tested and we're getting blessed. Now, a test, remember, my, my darling, a test could be an evaluation or an examination. So in an evaluation, it's not so much pass-fail like, like, an, like an examination. In an evaluation, it's like, are you going to get three gold coins or 30? Are you going to get 30 gold coins or 300? What is it going to be, my baby? That's what God is saying to us. Generator, operator, destroyer, Allah, Buddha, Jekina, Jehovah, don't matter, don't care. It's the same energy. Source is the same. It's a blueprint that's unfathomable, unborn, undying, because it, it's unconscionable. We will never be able to define God while we're here in a body. Okay. So compassion is love in action. And the highest form outside of the Godhead of any energy manifested is love. Their energy is higher and it's divine will. But look at the sun. It's an amalgamation of all the love in the universe. And 
it's the animals, the plants, whatever. There's love in ways that we can't fathom. Just because it's logical, actual, factual, just because it's on Google in a book, a history book, a science book, a religious book, don't mean it's everything. Doesn't mean it's the thing. The thing is love. And the higher forms of love is compassion. Okay, so when we're not in a forgiving energy, we're stepping out of, we need to forgive because we were forgiven for our sins. God gave us love. God gave us Christ consciousness. What well, It's source energy. The, the creator gave us Christ consciousness. So when we're in that loving energy, we're on a throne, at least a covenant spot. It, there's a laurel here, a wreath, which means we've achieved, we've gone through some kind of initiation. It's, it's Jupiter here too, so. We have some kind of divine assist. If we have the capacity for love, we have the capacity for divinity. If we have the capacity for divinity, we have the capacity to be free and at peace. Meaning not needing to reincarnate here in the physical dimension. And even if we are here, we might not need to be here, which means we're on assignment. If they knew better, they would do better. And if we're the one in high vibration at a higher energy frequency, if we're the ones who know better, we need to be the ones who model doing better. Does that mean we need to stand in the line of fire and continue being harmed or getting our boundaries stepped all over or getting our needs not met? It does, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is love is the answer, desire is the key. If a person's not able to return our love back to us, it means they're under resource. They don't have enough self-love. They don't have enough self-awareness. They don't have enough self-healing, self-awakening. You know, this is a coveted spot. So a lot of times when a person is coveting something, it's because they think they're lacking that thing. So they're not sitting in that energy that attracts. Because when a fool makes a mistake, they make excuses. When a fool goes without, they complain. You know, someone who works hard doesn't complain. They'll work hard and they'll have something to complain about, but you won't hear many complaints from them. A fool won't do any work. They'll do nothing and complain about everything. A wise man will do everything and complain about nothing. So th these people who need our forgiveness, who need our love, who need our compassion, they don't need our tolerance. They don't need access to us. They don't need the opportunity to harm us, to disrespect us again. They may be mislabeling, misjudging, misperceiving, misusing, mistreating, fumbling, essentially, us in general. They may be going ham hog crazy. That's not good. Nunca mali, you know. It's not, it's not good. No bueno. It might not be that bad, not Kemali, but it's no bueno, it's not good either. What it is, it's like, forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. We should pray healing and forgiveness over every single person that we come across, especially the ones that hurt us. Because you can't hate somebody unless there was love there previously, believe it or not. <laughs> you cannot hate a complete stranger. You might have felt some jealousy, but envy, hatred, it comes from a, a connection. It comes from the opportunity to grow together, from the opportunity to bond, from the opportunity to unify and we choose to separate, to harm, to hate. So sometimes people are serving their purpose. They might be karmic. Who knows? Who cares really? Yeah, so I'm just getting this song that, you know, we were innocent and sometimes we needed to get slapped awake, woken up. Whatever that is, whatever that looks like, for whatever reason, for whatever purpose. 
you know, this person might have been greedy, grubby. That's the negative energies here. Um, this person might have also come into the physical, Queen of Pentacles, Regina Denari, say the Bastioni, Six of Wands. They might have come into the picture. It might have been their job to activate us, to heal us. You know, activations are typically after something negative. You always spring forward after you're pulled back a little bit. It's like an arrow. If you're going to shoot forward, you've got to have a little tension pulling back. There cannot be an expansion if there wasn't a previous contraction. There cannot be an in-breath if there wasn't first an exhale. There cannot be a recovery. There cannot be a golden age if there wasn't previously a dark age. But again, also be mindful because sometimes people have planned chaos so that they can create the order and the harmony and so they can engender some type of favor. That's another thing we'll get with Regina Denari, the queen of pentacles here. It's called coins. You know, in her negative energy, she's servile, servile, dull, boring, pedantic, basic, a gold digger, lazy, clumsy, or mediocre at best. But in her higher energy, first of all, she's the physical manifestation of all the things we came into this life to achieve. She's the physical manifestation. She's the soul on a physical assignment, Regina Denari. She's the soul receiving the material benefits of the inc incarnational cycle, Regina Denari here. With Se de Bastioni, she's received her chosen spot and she's here sitting in that position. Yeah, and we also have Regina de Spada here, the queen of swords. So that's the soul in, in awareness of its spiritual self. We have the ace of swords. So that's the truth here. So with this new moon in Libra, it's also an, a, a, the second moon of the month. Now it's not a super moon because it's not a, I mean, it's a super moon. Um, it's not a full, it's not like a blue moon because it's not the second full moon of the month. So it's not, but it is the second new moon of the month, but usually blue moons are full moon. So you could see it, but it's special. It's a special moon because, you know, we have Regina Denari, we have Vieti Denari here, Casa Denari. So the Queen of Pentacles with the Ten of Pentacles, that normally means that we're needing fulfillment. We're needing legacy. So there's that why of the why of the why of the why. How of the how of the how of the how. You know, if it don't matter, then we don't care. That's really what it is, how it is, how it's going to be. Because we needed emotional fortitude, strength, courage, and wisdom with the the strength card. Just because a person treats us harshly, it, it's really more about them, not about us. And it, it being a Libra new moon, it's compassion, it's duality, it's impartiality, it's polarity, it's understanding that frequency, energy, vibration dictates the experience. It doesn't dictate our demeanor, our character. And it also does mean that we're strong. We have emotional fortitude, strength, courage, and wisdom. We've overcome something dark. We have the 10 of wands here. We've overcome something dark, some kind of hellish condition or ordeal essentially is what that is. We've completed an ordeal. Re denari. So we needed to master our spirit and the material blessings that come along with it. And that's really what we should be trying to do. Not a sword, we should be on that path, feeling those opportunities to pull through, come through, stand hard, stand harder, stand on business at least. Because we're of two minds, two of swords, either indecisive of an opposing mind, we might be opposing ourselves.
because there's some kind of new emotional fulfillment here, some kind of new harmony. Over the last month or so, truth has been coming through about some of the things that the divine promised us in this life. And we should be coming into this spot or we should be sitting in that spot with a knowing, knowing that we've kind of made it in some sense. We've got some kind of coveted or esteemed coming to us, if that makes any sense. Now, from the other side, they have the Six of Pentacles, we have the Six of Wands. So, so somebody may think that they have the solution for us. They may think that they can support us. A lot of times people are trying to help, but they're really in a frame because they haven't asked if they can support us or we haven't asked them for help. And when we have a double six, that means favor, blessings, choice, anointing. It also means um, support. It's just dirty child. Yeah, so this other side is of an opposing mind, two of swords, because they feel a little short-sighted. There's a little bit of a love-hate. They want to be connected to us. They want to be attached to us. However, they see that things should go a certain way. That means they're imposing. Listen, it's fine to want to help another person. It's fine to want to support another person. But if we can't say to them, hey, I see you're struggling. I see you're falling. Or, hey, I see some unlikely outcomes. I see some um, unknown or unwanted outcomes. I, I also see some solutions. May I share them with you? Do you have a moment? May I make an observation? Do you have a moment? May I give you some feedback? If, if they're not, yes, it might not be the right time. It might not be the right dialogue. It might not be the right rapport. And see, that's the thing. When you give love, when you give advice, it's unconditional. You really should not respect anything in return. And that's just the thing. Unless it's like a business arrangement contract or some kind of policy procedure protocol of society that we belong to, we're, we're on and tripping. It means we have an agenda. So a lot of help is disguised control. It's designed to disarm us usually because we're the ones with the stronger boundaries, at least these days, right? That's sign language for yes, American sign language for yes. We can do the clarification. Yeah, so the King of Pentacles came back with the lover's card. So the, we had the Queen of Pentacles, King of Pentacles. We might also be dealing with like a Gemini rising, King of Swords, lover's card. It can be Mars and, and, and Gemini. We have the Ten of Wands and the Ace of Wands here. So that talks about it taking a long time to get prepared and we're being prepared to receive some type of blessing here in the physical. It's not just a spiritual blessing and anchors into the physical. Because I believe somebody's gonna make a committed offer. Now it can't have to deal with business or money. It can also have to deal with teaching us something to make our way around I'm hearing like an industry. Cause we went through a lot to be prepared and it's a late arrival, it's a late. So we were going through a lot to make it to wherever we are, somebody else, went through a lot to get to where they are and they're gonna have to go through a lot to kind of come online to awaken and to heal. Six of Wands, Ace of Swords, it, it, they needed to have several experiences and they needed to be a kind of a tit for tat or the, maybe the Lord breadcrumbed or the devil breadcrumbed them to be honest, the enemy. Cause that Ace of Wands is temptation. And then we have the king of wands with the eight of wands. So we want to expand. 
We want purchase, franchise. We want things to move quickly. Eight of Wands and the King of Wands. We might be preparing to overcome some kind of boundary, restriction, rule, regulation. We might have been rained down, wrangled down, restrained in some kind of way. Somebody here could have their Jupiter in Gemini or there could be a block. Love's not coming through until we learn about our own energy and we might have been trying to get love into our life but we might have been wounded or harmed trying to love on somebody there might have been a lack of awakening a lack of healing with the seven of cups somebody could have been under illusion illusion confusion or living in sin with the seven of cups there could also just be um some enfeeblement on a soul level there's some kind of energy that was being put out or projected that needed to come because whatever energy we were putting out invited in the devil, to be honest. And I hate to say it, but that's the energy somebody is standing in. See, we're standing in our contentment. We're self-contained. We don't need anybody. We want somebody. And that might be what was difficult. We were seeing love come towards us. And since they they weren't opting into the, the, the toxic ways or we were not behaving in a toxic way, in the connection, there was a belief that the love wasn't mutual because we weren't, you know, stepping off our throne, stepping out of our energy, you know, taking our crown off and chasing. We may have also run because the way that the love was presented scared us. There was some type of ignorance or falsity, illusion even. Because there was a previous offer on the table in the past. And there's some truth about it that needs to come out. And we're feeling said truth. So we're intuiting what this truth is. We might have be discovering like, oh, that's what they meant or that's what they were feeling or that's what was going on or that's what I should have discerned or I wish I had done this differently. Okay, we've got to take those lessons into the future. It's okay to go towards the past, to inventory, examine with curiosity and investigation, but it to wallow, to go back to the past, to live, to go back to the past, to conjure up some hurting and wounding from the past is illogical and inane. So I just saw the seven of pentacles. There's a double seven here. And from the other side, yeah. So there might have been love trying to be offered to us. We could have been unawakened, unhealed in a little bit. And I also know that we're going up against the same kind of energy. So when we were unawakened and unhealed, we were missing love opportunities. And if somebody's being disrespectful to our feelings or they're hurting our feelings or they're disrespecting our kindness or they're taking our kindness for weakness or they're skirting around our boundaries, so somebody's acting up, messing up, being a fool looking stupid, acting stupid, being stupid. It just means they're un unhealed, unawakened. And we need to have love and compassion. They might not get it here in the physical. It might come to them in the next lifetime. It might be a little extra protection for them because they need to wake up and it's not our job to do it for them. So they're going to have to go through more heartache, heartbreak because listen, suffering is a choice. Most people, they don't return to the path when they feel pain. So they experience some austerity because austerity cleanses. But the thing is, suffering purifies. So cleansing is like purgatory, but suffering is like hell. That purification is like hell. You'll need to spend an eternity in the pit to knock that stupid out of you. A little bit of struggle, though, can cleanse us. But that's when we're not evil, sinister, wicked, or not harming others, or not ignorant of others. Typically, we were just unhealed, unawakened. We were in the miserly, bitter energy instead of the evil, sinister, and wicked. Evil is lived spelled backwards, so we're going against God versus towards God, typically a treason of our own selves if we're even able to have treason against the Lord. If we do forsake the Lord, we have already forsaken ourselves. That's just the thing. And it may take people an entire lifetime to understand that, to each his own. 
Yeah. So there were things going on in the depths of the soul and the bumping around in the depths of the subconscious. And it was the opportunity for greatness, but they needed to have a bigger, brighter, and better mind. They needed to see a bigger, brighter, and better future. They might not have been doing that. They might have been answering to the sex appeal. They might have been in their genitals, in their libido. They might have been in their ego, even with the ones here. I keep getting the devil energy. So we have the king of wands and the queen of wands. This is a message from the other side. And we're not going to put this out. But again, that's the thing. Unless they are Virgo rising, um, Venus and Pisces, unless they're feeling confused or mystified. But if they're feeling confused and mystified, what's here is an opportunity. So get it together. Put a ring on it, make that actual commitment, put it in writing or draw it out with all the details. You don't need to put it in writing, but you need to say, this is what it is. This is the label that it has. This is what's up. This is the expectation. Here's step one, step two, step three. They might be out of order, but here's what's to expect. Here's the little timeline or the different moving parts. If that's what the Ace of Pentacles, undenari here. If, if you can't spell it out, pull through, come through, come hard, come hard, or stand out facing this, then you need to go away. And that's just the thing. That's the terms of conditions by the universe. Three of swords. Unless it's some kind of um, cold, harsh truth. To come out, it isn't. It's the conditions from the universe. If you want legacy, if you want to come into the promise on your life, all the things that were promised to you in the physical, it's going to come through um, making choosing love every time. So it doesn't always mean we get to choose love because sometimes there's boundaries. We got to choose to be loving. Sometimes... We're trying to love on a person that doesn't even love themselves, so they can't return our love. How are we going to be at peace with somebody that's at war with themselves? But that means we walk away loving on them, having compassion for them and their stupidity, their unhealed unawakenedness, and we pray for them and we move on about our business. You know, if we come twice, thrice, and they're not able to receive our love, that means they're under-resourced. And we're asking them for $100 and all they got is $50. It's not their fault. Yes, it is their responsibility, but we can go on about our business and go for that person with $100. If we're looking for a gold coin and all they got is a silver coin, there's nothing wrong with their silver coin. It just might not fit our needs. It doesn't mean we need to yell at them and scream at them and tell them that they're ugly or that they're wrong or that they're bad for only having a silver coin. If we tell them that I, we love them and we want to be with them and all they can do is, is, is not enter our phone call and, and not keep their commitments and, and not keep their promises and not acknowledge our time, energy, space, attention, not acknowledging all the, the loving, caring, kind grace that we're trying to bestow upon them, that's not our fault, that's not our problem. They don't want a gold coin. Or maybe all they have is a silver coin and can't offer us a gold coin. So we need to walk away with love. Yes, our heart may be hurt, but see, the wound is where the light shines through. Pain returns into the past. So this is the awakening that we need, the aha moment. Because we will be stripping, depleting, this legacy of ours if we don't learn, if we don't make those changes. See, we don't change ourselves, we change who we're around. See, a double five. So th that's loss and depletion. Sometimes we lose people, but we gain ourselves. And that's gotta be fine. That's gotta be okay. We go, by the way, until the world card comes. So there are some terms and conditions that sometimes it it'll be a difficult ending, but things need to end. Because when things end, there's some kind of illumination. This is the hidden sunrise. It comes through being in the, the physical dimension. See that red there? It, it comes through the thread of light. But there's an eye of illumination here as well. But the sword is covering it. it means we need truth. And we do need to kind of knock about of the depths of our soul. We need to kind of drum our subconscious a little bit. Dredge it up. And we're really digging for gold. We're looking for love. Seven of cups, ace of cups. We might need to turn over every rock, kiss every frog, turn over every leaf, you know, pour over every cup and examine its its contents. We might need to pull a little testing strip up and see if there's any 
minerals or metallic chemicals in the water, right? And see if it's something that we really want to digest, ingest, you know, it might not be. And here's what's really going to hurt is if we never knew. So if we weren't our authentic self, well, if we weren't our, our whole self, if we didn't give it our all, King of Wands, Eight of Wands, that's when we're going to be looking over our shoulders, wondering. And, you know, another part of this that I'm seeing right now in the practice is coming up a lot this past couple of weeks or so, a couple of few weeks. You know, if we're used to being served love on a golden spoon, a lot of this time, we know what's up. Self-worth and value, if it doesn't feel good, we're able to walk away and we feel supported because whatever we want, and whenever we feel it's been actualized, affirmed, and acknowledged in the past before, maybe not with this person, maybe not in this period. But see, if we are not served love, if we're not used to, if we haven't grown up with love on a, a, a silver powder, on a, a, on a, glow, a golden spoon, what will happen is we'll learn to lick love off a knife, or we will at least become willing to lick love off a knife. That's a dangerous proposition. And see, this is the awakening that we need. We need to see things differently. We need to make changes, not in the physical five of pentacles, not in the in the spiritual um, five of swords, but in the esoteric here. Five of cups, there, there might be something here that's a crab in a bucket. The good might be getting in the way of the great, or we might just need to honor some kind of disappointment or actually accept defeat. We might have tried really hard with a single person and it didn't go anywhere. It's because, you know, for Botan, Five of Swords, or Love Hate, there's boundaries or a calling or a covenant on our life because we're desiring union and it's going to come through, but maybe not with that person. Yeah, see, here's the devil. So we needed to ditch this itch, we needed to dump the weight. And it's okay. We have to come in and get some kind of connection. All the cups are connections, but it depleted itself. Five of cups is a depleted connection. It could be disappointment on a friend. It could be getting broken up with. It could be getting not right cart rejected, but it, could, it, it something happens that chain is a burst bubble. Okay. With this devil here, honestly, this is a connection that we need to let go. It's karmic. And it ran its course in the five or 10. The 10 of cups would mean that the devil God, that's a snake in the garden of Eden, five of cups. I mean, 10 of cups, devil card, snake in the garden of Eden. Five of cups, devil card, that's after the fall. And there's that 10 of cups. Yeah, so what we don't realize is that we have a golden heart. Regina de Copa, here's the Queen of Cups. We have a golden heart. We are God sovereign and free. And the creator had to come in and defend paradise. The Ten of Cups behind the back, and that's the creator. Not the creator being, but the creator. So I, I never thought I'd see. You know, we're really far from home. We're not in spiritual union with the divine. We need to enter into a spiritual union with the divine. We need to remember who the Lord is to us, number one. The Ace of Pentacles, by the way. And number two, we need to take our place in the heavenly choir. And by doing that, we need to believe that whatever we want, hope, wish, pray for, it's out there for us. And we're going to attract what we are. So if we repress, suppress so much so that we have to, we project onto others. The only way for us to work that healing out is for a karmic relationship. So the thing that we project the most is what we attract most often. This is the page of swords. So we need to learn that. And it's something to do with our absolute authority, swords. Pages are being prepared to receive. So we're being prepared to receive spiritual authority here, absolute authority. And it's a physical gift. It's a material blessing here in this life, Ace of Pentacles.
And it comes to God duties and obligations. It's just the, it, that it, unless we can stand at the throne of God as a godly being, th things are not going to work out well. There's no paradise there for us. But also we've been saved. Our position, our place in paradise has been preserved because we kept coming up against this fallen asshole is what they're saying. That's the language I'm hearing. So we're dealing with the fallen. These are people that keep coming through to kill our joy, unless we're dealing with a Scorpio sun or an Aquarius rising, basically a Scorpio sun or midheaven. We're dealing with somebody that keeps coming through. Knight of um, Wands is the returner. It's the ex-boyfriend that keeps coming back again and again and again and again. So really what was going on is we were stuck dealing with a blessing that wasn't coming to fruition because some kind of awakening needed to happen, mainly on the other side, but it never happened. And the term for whatever that time that union was supposed to come through, it never happened. And so they're falling or getting ejected. The authority, the tower, that's how that works. And the clarification here is that a spirit is coming through to cancel this union if we are in a union because this person is not only not waking up, but also they're losing their grace. They're losing either their crown or their, their spot in heaven, or at least they're losing their claim to this union. We're being assigned a new union, a new mate, so that we can return. And this is what God wants for us Six of Cups is always how that goes. Because we have our wings. We've reached spiritual perfection. We're actually a, a heavenly intuitive. And it, the divine is losing patience here. That's what the... Hangman and Temperance card me. Because the changes need to be made. The other side is, is, is blocking out love. And that's why we should sit there with the knowing. See, the high priestess can't really affect a lot unless she's asked directly. Never, ever does the high priestess reveal without being asked. And even sometimes when you ask her directly, she won't reveal everything. But somebody who fell from grace, this is the, the exact combination for fell from grace. The exact. Um, say the Copa, Six of Cups, I should just read the card. Six of Cups, authority, the tower fall from grace and this is not us and so it, it took us a long time to recognize what we were being offered and ace is always being offered from the divine yeah i never thought i'd see you so far away from me so far away from home so far away from me king of pentacles so there is somebody out there that's in our vibration our person has been manifested upon the earth we may have even come into um contact with this person we, we didn't know. A page of Swords is a delayed message. Knight of Pentacles is a delayed arrival. So the Knight of Pentacles came out before the Page of Swords. Okay? The Knight of Pentacles came out before the Page of Swords. I'm gonna pause a quick second. Hi, Jean. Be catching up on a lot of rest. And um, at the, I'm getting behind on work, so I'm drinking coffee, which is abnormal for me. Normally, I'll get a shot of espresso after my morning run. So to have 32 ounces here is strange to me, but this is not straight coffee, but it's still... But I'm bright eyed and bushy tailed now. So we have the lovers, Dewey the Nadi, the two of pentacles here, it's called coins. Regina de Copa here, it's called the Queen of Cups. Casi de Copa here, it's called the, the Ten of Cups. So we do have a mate here, King of Pentacles. Somebody's coming in to make a commitment. We've already come across them. We had the Queen of Pentacles. We have already come across them. And clarifying that is the um I'm, I'm hearing 
Infante Disparde. So that's the page of swords, un denare. So that's the ace of pentacles. Because it's, it's down, oh, it's right here on top. Okay, so ace of pentacles here is coins with the um, page of swords here, it's name. So this is a delayed arrival. Somebody, somebody's taking their time to make an offering to us, but it's gonna pull through, come through, it's on the way. They're just figuring out what to do, if that makes sense. And it is the masculine. They're skilled, they know what to do. So in that case, it's always advisable that we just work on our energy. So there's more changes we have to make in the physical five of pentacles. There might be some support we need to ask the universe. Fives can also be petitions, especially if the page is around. So this is the compassion that I'm getting. A lot of times we give our all to somebody or something and it doesn't work out. And, and we don't need to walk away saying, there's something wrong with you and blah, blah, blah. We don't need to fix it out. The why of the why of the why doesn't matter. If you put down a boundary and somebody doesn't respect it, repeat the boundary. Now, listen, some boundaries are, are no fly zone. For instance, don't mess with my cat. Don't. Don't. Now, her name means ferocious warrior. Okay. But she's a sweetheart, even though she's exotic and she has that wild aspect to her. She's loving, generous, caring, and kind. Does that make sense? So I won't warn you twice not to mess with my cat. The first time you're out. Um, it, a lot of people are like that with their children. There's a lot of things they'll forgive, but they won't forgive things when it comes to you messing with their family. Does that make sense? Me, um, I have a ministry. So if you affect my ability to do my ministry, I cut you out like a bad cancer. I don't, it's just absolute you'll go from a lush, fertile field to um, a barbed wire broken glass in an in instant. Does that make sense? So we all have our, you know, our, our no-fly zone is what it's called. Our, our, our razor-sharp, cutting, bleeding edge of a boundary is, is what that is. But still remember... If somebody is not respecting your boundaries, if somebody is not re returning the love, if somebody is not being open and honest about their intentions, what they need from us, if somebody is on strategy when we're on authenticity, it's not our fault. It's not our problem. And it, it usually isn't our fault. It usually is their fault. It's usually our problem, but we don't have to make it our problem. Our problem is just saying like, oh, okay, my needs aren't getting met. Like I, I see here that you really want something casual. Well, I want real love. I don't want a, a casual relationship. I need a whole commitment. Oh, are you, are you, are you? Okay, you're not respecting my boundaries, bye. If, for example. Or, you know, I mean, the list is multitudinous. So that's just the thing. If we put ourselves out there and it's not reciprocated, that's okay. So we have a double nine here. So something should be over, something should be completing, something should be culminating. And we've also reached this pinnacle of consciousness as well with the double nine and a double king. This other side, they're greedy or attached or insecure or something of that nature. Yeah, they're you know, oh, I know you got a little fight in your left. I know you got a lot of strength left. Yeah, should be running, but I just, yeah, should be crying, but I just can't let it show. I should be running, but I can't stop thinking of all the things I could have said, but I never said all the things I could have did, but I never did all the things that you wanted from me, all the things that you needed from me. But here's the deal. Don't worry about rotten fruit. Don't sit there worrying about when they're going to get their comeuppance. Rotten fruit will always fall off the vine by itself. It's not a, a rotten apple sitting in the bunch. It's If it's a rotten piece of fruit, it's going to fall off the vine by itself. The thing about karma is the trash usually takes out itself. You might need to get it out of your house, get it out of your space. 
So this could also be somebody who's like a Virgo midheaven, which would be a Sagittarius rising. Yeah, because we're going to manifest everything that we want here, but we need to get to our own healing. And there is somebody here hiding the fact that they want to make a commitment to us. They're preparing something. And it's not the normal shenanigans that we get from the connection on the karmic level here. Is they're gonna choose to come to higher ground with us and they're they're holding the ground right now, which means that they they're they're in a battle of some kind, seven of wands. That there's a hidden anxiety moon card seven of wands that there's hidden wealth or a hidden desire to make a commitment there also is hidden protection in king of swords that's a confirmation this person's very clear and precise and they're a ruler a boss they may have the kind of authority and also they may need to wait to see us again. A lot of times we think that a person has our number or that a person will approach us directly. A lot of people put conditions on things that, that they'll do. I, something could be 20 blocks away, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna walk or ride my bike. But if it's nighttime, I'll call an Uber, I'll go to the neighbor, get a ride. I'll rent a car for the weekend. Does that make sense? So it's like, uh, what I'm saying is even myself, like I, I like to walk it out. I'm an athlete. Okay. I'm, I'm, I move, you know, it's not uncommon for me to move my body over 50 miles in a single week. What I'm saying, it's been a while since that happened every other week, let's say where I'm at though, is like, I won't do it at night we all have our own personal boundaries. So that's what this is saying. It's like somebody is busy and they're dealing with something and they don't want more on their plate until, and they might, we might not know. We don't know. We know who this person is, but not how they feel about us. And I wouldn't be upset because we're not engaged and enthralled in this thing. They're going to be loving to us the next time they see us and they're waiting till they see us again. I'm also being told that we're acting stupid, looking stupid by being in the house all the time. And somebody's feeling, somebody wants something that they're working through to So they're working on something in, in their authority. Something has been arrested in their life. And they're whittling through some kind of judgment because somebody has been found guilty and they're deciding according to boundary standards rules regulations and restrictions what to do with this person i'll be honest it, it's a person they were betrayed by somebody who tried to manipulate them they kept coming back with this manipulative energy and they're cutting it off for good and this person is going to come back towards us with the truth now, uh, I'm the kind of person to feel, to, to think like, oh, hey, you know, you've liked me for several weeks. You never told me that's annoying to me. Get away. But they're going to come through with the right thing. A, a lot of times people will have feelings, but they, it'll take them a while to recognize that they have feelings. Sometimes people will go off of what's in front of them over oh, here at work. Let me talk about work with you instead of being like, hey, I've been feeling you for a couple of weeks. Can I holler at you for a second? But the moment that they recognize that they may wait till the next time they see us. They may not call us on the phone if they, if they've had several chances in, in real life to take their shot, you know, shoot their shot. I don't know the exact particulars, but that's actually what I'm getting here. And we've had a couple of, this is scratch paper. We, we've had a couple of opportunities to do a lover's card because we have the 10 of cups with the 10 of pentacles. That's always love. That was the incense holder. I'm glad she's sleeping. She does not like things on the floor. Um, my cat is a cleaner than I am. Okay, so yeah, somebody's leaning towards yes. They're, they're, they they want to come towards us. 
we might have had a, a false start of misconnection as well. I'm detecting that. So two, two, three things that I'm getting, 2.5 things that I'm getting. One, we are connected to somebody, however, it's cold, meaning we're both frigid. We're not willing or able for whatever reason to be open and honest with the flowing of the love vibe. The other thing is somebody is connected to us that is down to make a commitment, but the things need to be made clear. Things have not been made clear. The other one is there's somebody that we're considering or that's considering us that it would be an absolute yes if all the information is on the table. Like for me, I don't do casual dating. So first or second date, I, I, I'm my question is, do you got a passport? Do you want kids? Because the answer is no, I'm, no, no second date. Make sense? You don't got to have a passport, but you better be into fitness, traveling, and children, or buy. So we all have something like that. So it's, it's like that. It's Right now, it's a maybe until it's clear. Does that make sense? Um, whatever the particulars are, it's like that, you know? Meaning like, do you want to move out of this town? Because I don't want to, I don't want to retire in this city. You know, who, uh, that's a friend I'm talking, I'm thinking of a friend right now. Um, I have another friend. She doesn't want to date people who don't have a musical um, acumen. That like you don't need to be a musician, but if you don't really like music, she can't, because that's her life, you know. Um, me, I'm super into fitness. So, like, if you sit on the couch and watch TV all day, that's uncomfortable to me. I don't even have a TV in my bedroom. Not one that goes on all the time. Does that make sense? So, it, we all have our our almost until... So it's at a maybe right now. Now, they're leaning towards yes. And so I also get this card a lot when the offer hasn't been made. Or put it this way, keep doing the things that we're doing. Keep on doing. We can't just sit there and wait for it to come in if we see it in the cards or we're told by a reader. Because we need to continue making the causes that lead to that effect, meaning... How are you gonna get groceries in your in your fridge unless you leave the house and go to the grocery store? Sure, you can get it delivered as well, but you hear what I'm saying? Like you might not never ever meet that man unless you go out to the club or the bar or you run errands or you know what I'm saying. So sometimes we need to speak up, and it's usually not on the feminine side. Could we're getting maybe leaning towards yes. So that that's for the Ten of Cups, Ten of Pentacles. If we talk it out, we will have long lasting love, happily ever after, and legacy. Now for the King of Swords, Queen of Swords, what, what is that about? Surrender. So we're feeling austerity here. We've had to take the high road, the harder right versus the easier wrong, we might actually also be in separation. And I do feel like somebody is not being clear on their feelings, on their feelings, but they're going through something about it. Uh, they may also be focusing on money or they may have made the wrong decision because they thought we weren't very viable as an opportunity. For instance, I have a friend that tells everybody that they're in healthcare and they wear scrubs all day, every day. But if you go into their practice, yeah, they're out on the floor looking like a technician. But if you go there the first two hours, like between eight and 10 on a Monday, you realize that that's their own practice. Does that make sense? So it looks to everybody like they're a little worker in the business. Meanwhile, they're running things. Does that make sense? So what I'm getting is that we were looked at by somebody and downgraded. When really we're at the top and they think we're towards the bottom. And so they went on because they, they're looking for... It, it probably money. So 
when I see that, there's two things there. First of all, what's for you will not pass you by. So just put onto the universe what you're wanting. The second thing is somebody comes across us and we're the thing that they want, but they mistook, mislabeled, misunderstood, misrepresented, misperceived, whatever, what have you. It means God either covered their their eyes or they were being strategic when we were being authentic. You know, you may be a, a, a not us watching, but the person that we're talking about may be somebody who's only looking to be. This is such an arbitrary example, and I hate to be using money, but stay. You know, this the people I run with. So stay. Um, we're looking for somebody that makes a certain amount of money. Here's an example. I had a friend who was dating somebody. They went on a few dates and she said that she was going to school to become a social worker and the guy never went on another date with her. Keep in mind, she's going to go get a doctorate in social work. On average, these people earn six figures. They're usually like directors of clinical situations. They, so a doctorate in social work means you're going into social work to run things and to manage policy. You're going to work with other social workers, meaning you're, you're probably a director or, you know, some kind of program manager or something like that. Not no minuscule front end worker. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I absolutely love social workers. Um, does that make sense? So he heard social work thinking that she was making forty, sixty thousand dollars a year when really she's going to be making one hundred fifty grand a year. Does that make sense? So. You know, his loss, because my homegirl is fly, number one. Number two, he was probably thinking money, cash, dollar bills, instead of being like, well, what is that going to lead to? And what do you hope to do with that? You know what I mean? And I don't really understand anybody that's making financial considerations at early that early in dating. Does that make sense? But like, that's just the thing. When you're going out there strategic and we're out there being authentic, the, the wires may get crossed and that's fine. That just means God covered your eyes. Somebody deceived themselves. And really, they're going to come back later and realize that they were so money hungry that they fumbled an opportunity with greatness because they couldn't see us correctly. They couldn't clearly see us. And when we take the mask off, it's it's glory. But all they can do is, is look at us from behind the scenes on their screen, even though they have access to us because they were looking stupid, acting stupid. And they're all hobbled and clobbled, but they, what are they going to do? Because they've already moved on, moved along. So it's fine if you have a vision for your life, but the thing is you've got to be open and honest about what it is that you want. And that's what the king and queen were saying of swords. But let's look at the king and queen of wands because that came out as well. Okay, so somebody here has a big ego. And they ran. That's why they keep coming back with the, with the knight of wands because we have the king of wands as well. And we are not easily discernible. We're not opening up about our feelings. We're opening up about our goals, our wishes, our dreams, and they're not seeing how they fit into that. Okay, well, here's the deal. If I say what I want and you don't say what you want, you just walk away, we're not going to know if we can meet in the middle. And what I want and what you want may be the same exact thing. We may be calling them different things. So if you don't actually say what you want after I've said what I want, we're not going to be able to see if it fits. You may hear what I want and run away for whatever reason. It's usually something karmic, though. So I was pulling on the king and queen of pentacles. They're in separation. And this is us. We're the king and queen of pentacles. We're in separation right now. We're already in union. And it, it it's God put us in union, to be honest. But things haven't been spoken out right now. And somebody's being superficial surface level. 
And when it does come through, it's going to be a shocking surprise. But the other person is feeling us. That's, again, why I was saying, like, this person's trying to come back and make an offer. But they're dealing with some kind of rule regulation restriction right now. Something's come under their authority. And they're trying to work it out, figure it out. Yeah, it's put on a holding pattern right now, not a back burner kind of thing. Something's being worked out. It might be through the courts. It might be there's there's an organization around. It can be work. If it's work, they're in a position of power. It can be that we're in some kind of social group, church. So they might not be able to hit on us at church. They might need to wait till there's a function. It might be a social group, so they can't meet out at a meetup. We might need to do it at the 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 smoothie afterwards or the the coffee afterwards. You know what I mean? I, I don't know all the particulars because this is a a general reading, but we have clarifications here. They want things to be easy. Okay, that that's kind of hard, especially when we are exacerbated the divine feminine. You know, here's the deal: don't circle back around later when you think we're in a better mood. Be clear on your intentions and your needs when you approach me. Or I'm never going to be in the mood to deal with you. This is what's up. And that's the divine feminine anyway. Even though we're loving, caring, and kind, doesn't mean that we're... See, somebody might be... Yeah, they think... They want to come in and look a certain way. Okay. Um... what I'm getting is that they're waiting until something happens it might be the moment or something that's in, in their authority that they're working out okay here's that back burner four of cups and we're both wanting the same thing Seven of Pentacles. So there's a plan here, an agenda. It may fail, but it's it, 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 if we have hopes and wish and dream and faith and optimism here, and if we clear out the gross energy from our life and we go on, on faith, if we go on calling, if we go on intuition and our inner being, we will meet this. Something is mounting seven of pentacles. So a seed's been planted in some kind of way. And I honestly think the moment will, will happen. There's something being worked out or healed right now. Four of swords with that emperor. The emperor has something on his plate is what the four of swords is talking about there. And here with the king of swords, eight of swords, it, it means that we are wanting rule regulation restriction so this king of swords something's been brought under his power and authority that's what the eight of swords is yielding to another person's power authority now the three of swords and the eight of swords are exactly the same with one change it's rules regulations restrictions or boundaries and standards the three of swords is from the universe the eight of swords is from the regular law and order regular policy procedure. So there's something here upon the earth that's been brought under their authority that they're working out. And when we just had the previous four of swords with the emperor, it means that there's something on their plate that need to work through before they come and deal with us for whatever reason. I can't see why a person would put love on the back burner. That doesn't make any sense to me. Unless, you know, you're, you're trying to finish something up for a couple of weeks or whatever, but, um, the thing about it is don't make another person wait when it comes to love or money. That's just, I don't understand that. Um, I, I don't get that at all. But, but again, something's being defended here and it's hidden. It's not out in the open, moon card seven of, of wands. It can be that there's some kind of hidden anxiety if the seven of wands is in reverse, uh, but there's not warfare. So, because it would mean that we let somebody close that shouldn't have been. Um, but this is this is what's going on. Somebody wants to make a commitment. And they're coming closer to
Yeah. It, it's because they're losing patience. They want access to us. They might feel like, yeah, so that 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 masculine, that eight of swords, king of swords, there's something here about not knowing how to navigate our energy, but fuck, let's screw this, screw that. Um, like, don't worry about how I come off. I, I, tell me what you want. Be clear on why you're approaching me. I'm always going to be an enigma wrapped in a mystery, confounding you. You cannot fathom me. I have a uterus. I'm a goddess. You're a man. Okay, that's what's up. You cannot fathom me. Stop pretending that you can't. What a futile endeavor. Tell me what you want. Okay, so that, that's what's coming through right now. But that is also like part of what I was getting. I didn't like that. I didn't want to say it. it. It was pissing me off. I hate that energy, but that's what was coming through with that Eight of Swords, King of Swords. I was saying that something's been brought under their authority. They have something on their plate. It's confusion. They don't know how to approach us. And they are also waiting to some kind of special moment because it's saying here that they're they're waiting for access or clearance. It also is that there is some kind of rule regulation restriction here. They might be in a position of power and they can't look like there's an impropriety, but that's not everybody. They're wanting to not get it wrong, but that's the thing. When you take risk in life, you take reward in life. I don't respect a man who's, you know, humming and hawing and uncertain. That's some beta energy, which is fine. That doesn't work for me. Be bold, be direct, be large and in charge or, or, or take a step back permanently. Um, that's just how that goes. Um, especially if the emperor's already come out with the king of swords and the king of wands, that, that don't do the beta-ish, please. No, but that happens. There's a reason for that too. I don't know what it is because that's not my department, but I know it exists. We all need support. I mean, that's what betas are for. Um, and betas, just so we know, betas are stronger than alphas then the alpha is able to get more out of the situation. Betas are typically stronger than alphas with their physical strength, but it's a single focus, it's not a general focus. So betas go long and hard on one thing. A beta uh, and alpha can do a little bit of everything, so they coordinate. An alpha will be able to rally the entire posse, will be able to rally the entire pack will be able to rally the entire crowd a beta will only be able to keep them in line a beta will be able to give somebody motivation an alpha will be able to give them inspiration but something is coming and it has to deal with policy, procedure, protocol here, rules, regulations, restrictions coming by the book or God duties and obligations. They're waiting for some type of clearance from the Lord, but it's already been granted to them with the um, La Papa La Peso here. It, it's been granted already. Okay, so the, yeah. They're trying to come to higher ground and they are feeling timid here with the full card. They fell out face down, so it's them, not us. Yeah, they might have failed before, but they were pretty stupid if that happened, Five of Swords. It meant they were short-sighted. They probably resorted to some kind of tactic and it blew up in their face or it didn't work, ultimately. It, I, I take that back. It didn't blow up in their face. That would be the Five of Cups or any other Mars card. They tried to make a love a love offer, but they were very, whatever they were saying got them pushed back. That's the thing. Like if, if, if things are confusing, double down with your intention. That's always the thing to do. And I don't get why people don't understand that. Double down on your intention. Stop trying to figure it out. Stop trying to shuck and jive and massage and assuage and be strategic. Say what you want. What are you praying to God for? Why are you approaching me? Why are you petitioning me for my time, energy, effort, and attention? Why am I being bothered right now? And sure, we can say that in a nice way. But see, that's the thing men need to get. I'm just going to say it and move on. If you're going towards something, be it a man, um, a woman, a job, whatever, what have you, if you're going towards something and you shoot your shot in your own little way and it doesn't work, before you turn around and walk away, say, this is why I approached. I came here for X, Y, Z. 
my objective today was ABC. I was hoping to get elemental P out of this dialogue or contact that I'm making with you right now. That's usually not the first thing to do, but that's the thing you do before you turn around and walk away. And I don't know how that's not clear. I I I'm confused. Because that means everybody's in their little ego. Everybody's in their little projection, projection, you know, protection of projection here. They, 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 they're worried about what's going to happen. They're worried about what might happen, which usually is rejection. I'm sorry, like, that's just some stupid-ish. If something rejects you, it means it wasn't for you. You're freed up to get to the next thing, which might be waiting for you. I'm sorry. If you feel bad about rejection, it means you don't have respect for the self. If you don't love yourself strongly enough, you're always going to be worried about rejection. Because, honey, if something doesn't want to, it wasn't for you. It's their loss anyways, baby. How you not know this? If somebody's able to say no to you, if somebody's able to deny you for a lover, for a job, for whatever, for what have you, it wasn't for you. Their loss, not ours. Their loss, not ours. Their loss. How's that not clear? I'm confused. Okay, but somebody's worked out trying to give us some kind of, but they want to see us King of Cups. They want to see us some, some kind of lovey-dovey vibe, but we're content, Nine of Cups. We're really, that's a shared energy here. We're content. We're only going to look, we're looking for things that light us up. So they're trying to make us feel all calm, cool, and collected. And we're looking to be made to feel alive. We need to feel a spark. So they're trying to calm us down or soften us up or soothe us or la-di-da -da or yadi yadi. That's literally what they're trying to do. That's what they're waiting for, preparing for, to come in and get us in a nicer mood, energy, vibe. That's what this is giving me. And what they don't recognize is that they need to give us something actionable. They need to give us something to work with. And it's not going to come from some kumbaya lullaby. It's not going to come from some you with your cuckoo. You know, would you could you cool feel better? Let me soothe you, make you comfortable. What a boring little basic little bitch. I'm sorry. What what a bull. But baloney. That that's some malarkey. That's some foolishness. Boy, bye. Don't don't leave that alone, please. And see, they we've already been clear with our boundaries when they approached us and they put that behind them. So they are gonna come through again. You see that um I keep saying Cavalli de Bastioni, but it's the Knight of Wands. That that I should just read the cards. The to, um, they're gonna come through again with the Knight of Wands because they want they want to offer us love permanently, not just one time. But they've retreated. They're they're drumming the the recesses of their soul. They're getting to the bottom of the situation because they want to succeed with wisdom they want to they so that, that's good but i'm still annoyed because you keep doing this come and go come and go don't give me whiplash don't don't do that um but that's what they're doing they're looking for some way to have some kind of victory through knowledge or they're looking to learn what they did wrong or they're, they're looking to go out there and figure out a way to fix it but th did you ask me for what you want yes or no let's be precise bottom line up front yes or no did you ask me for what you wanted from me? Did you approach me and say, hey, I'm feeling you. I want to take you out. I want to figure, figure out how we can get into a connection. Because if you didn't do it, you're wasting time. This is to the masculine or, or whoever is trying to approach us again. Because if you're out there figuring out what you did or what, you're trying to feel better. Is what, is that, at the end of the day, that's what it is. Because if you was doing anything else, you would have been coming for clarity, period, point blank, end of story. So this person is going to end up moving on. Now, it can be on with us because something's coming towards us. But they need to get to higher ground, mature a little bit, or figure out their intuition or their spiritual gifts. Get that eight of cups in the, the, the full card. They need a bramana to practice is what that means. And they're trying to make a love offer, but they're acting confused.
you know, cause they want to execute on this love. So this, I don't know what this King of Swords, Eight of Swords, because it's saying like they're ready to pull the trigger. Death card means execute. They're, they have a plan, the Seven of Pentacles, they're willing to execute this plan, Death card. It's about love. They want to work out the love. Eight of Pentacles, they want to commit themselves to the love connection. And it's a mutual choice. The Lovers card does not come out if it's not a mutual choice, unless it's in reverse. That means non-required. Um, and there's fairness here in love. So they don't want, they're wanting to see us be lovey-dovey is, is what this is. Okay, well, they're going to have to come back towards us. But they're looking towards the future. Okay, what does that mean? You know, they're trying to figure out a way. They're trying to figure out a way to offer us love. Okay, tell me what you want from me when you approach me or you're going to fail every time. Uh, that, that's just what it is. Not every woman can be seduced. Not every woman is easily impressed. And if you go too hard and have you trying to impress her instead of telling her what your intentions are, you might lose her. She might become so annoyed with you that she puts up a boundary. Then you're just harassing her or stalking her if you keep coming back again and again and again and again and again. Do not waste her time. Move the situation forward. Knight of Swords, be clear and be precise. Don't just keep coming, coming, and coming, and coming, and coming. Seize the day, homie. Knight of Swords. Oh, we have a Knave of Swords. Okay, so Knave of Swords, uh, which is the page. Um, now we have the Knight of Swords here in the clarification. Knave of Swords is, I mean, Knave of Wands, uh, that's the page of Wands. That's when somebody finds it sexy, or they're feeling bold, or they want to make an invitation, something. But you see, if you're watching this channel, we already have a very strong intuition. Okay, the, the Nine of Wands came. We already have a strong intuition, which means we're not going to be accepting invitations if something feels off. And they, it seems like they've already had a couple of opportunities to speak up, speak out. So we're, we're already distrustful. See, we already know that things are not as they seem. But it is a twin flame situation, but we're dealing with a chaser right now. They're looking everywhere for union, but they've already found it. It's us. I saw that when I saw the page of swords, ace of pentacles, it's us. It's us. We're that union. It's us. And this is us sitting there meditating, practicing, playing with our tarot cards, watching YouTube videos on tarot. We're in our energy. Yeah, so we're sitting there on the throne, the high priestess. This person is gonna come back and let their intentions be known. You see how there's two people in the sun card here? They're gonna, they want to be on the same page. They don't feel on the same page. Okay, but I, the too much stop, start, come and go energy. I don't like it. Four of cups, yeah. So it's either not moving very quickly, it's getting boring, four of cups. Lukewarm, tepid, placid, meaning not a lot of reaction here. Or something's been back burner, or we might not be interested anymore or at all, really. So we're preparing to move on with the Six of Swords because they haven't come towards us the right way. Yeah, it was kind of basic and boring when they, Five of Wands, they were pretty basic when they approached us or they were competitive or fighting. There's a typical male thing is they have their one way of flirting and when their way of flirting doesn't work, they try to double down, triple down instead of saying, oh, hey, I don't know how to mess with you. I like you. Um, what do I got to say to get your attention or to get more time from you? Um, my normal way of making an introduction is not working, but maybe I, I don't know something here. What's up with you? Are you single? Are you looking? You're beautiful. You're all I can see in this place. W when can I get some time alone with you? That's all you need to say. I don't understand this this energy because it, it, it's it's coming off like a confused alpha or a disorganized or neurotic masculine energy 
or a beta. And you see, we're very, very clear. We have discernment. So something's not meeting our needs, queen of swords. Um, yeah, because we think that they're a friend when they're feeling that we're beautiful. Okay, page of wands, queen of wands, it means we're the, we're vivacious to them. They, they think we're sexy, queen of wands, they think we're sexy. Three of swords here, or five of swords. Okay, but they they were short-sighted and it fell out face down. So something that they did was wrong. Five of swords is like um, short-sighted or um, a futile win. And queen of swords, five of swords, we're needing boundaries and standards here. They need to understand our boundaries, but see, we better be asked about our boundaries because we have to tell our boundaries we're usually put in a boundary. That's how that works, especially for the feminine. Yeah, seven of swords. They need to speak up about the truth here because we're we have other options, two of wands. We're gonna get this love. We're working on finding love as well. So that's one thing I'm seeing is that God could bring us back together. They have some strategy. I don't think they're being sideways, sneaky, seditious. I don't. It's it's true. They're not. Not with the High Priestess and the Desmond card. They're looking for strategy, tactic, or cunning. They don't understand. And I'm sorry. If you're confused and you're doing nothing, I'm turned off. Uh, 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 that's some data. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but... When you take risk in life, you take reward in life. If you are a beta man, make sure you're going for a beta female because an alpha female needs somebody large and in charge to direct. Somebody can say, I don't know how to navigate your energy, girl, but you're so beautiful. You're all I think about. What's up? That's all you got to say. I don't understand this other energy that I'm getting because it's they're coming off indecisive. Five of swords, seven of swords. So the only other opportunity here, and it's not true, but the only other opportunity here would be, and it's not confirmed, that... There is an enemy that we don't know about that they're fighting on our behalf or they might need to fight somebody before they come towards us so they don't come through with some karma hot on their coattails, you know. That's the only other, the only other, and we have the same clarifiers, but the seven of swords popped out. Yeah, because they want to make a love offer and they want to be free and unencumbered. And again, losing patience here because they want this 10 of pentacles. That's all they can think about. And you see, we're the queen of cups. So it's intended, okay, queen of cups, king of cups, 10 of pentacles. What that means is in the heavens, God has intended for us to be together. We were granted union with this person. This is our kingdom spouse. Okay, world card. Okay, so they're going to have to wrap this up. And they have a very limited amount of time. Give me some timing here, please. Please give me some timing. Give me a season. Okay, magic can use. So, again, I do feel like we need to be less prickly. Loving, caring, and kind. We can be, you see me, I'm pretty hardcore. It's hard to approach me if you're in your beta energy. You're just going to run away with your tail between your legs. You got to be all, all confident or you will fail every time. Um, but they have until a certain time here. Oh, this story is too long. I'm tired. Cosmic love, infatuation. So they're going at us through their material mind, their muggle mind. They're coming at us kind of basic. And, you know, they're being carried away by stupid-ish. They have obsessively strong emotions instead of putting them into good use. Because the love is cosmic. We, we've known each other before. We're connected in the heavens. We're in the 5D together already, even though we're very disconnected here in the 3D. And there's critical junctions here. So... Um,
it, things are going to take a turn either for the better or for the worse, but they're going to take a turn. Um, taking a big leap of faith, major decisions affecting the outcome here. Somebody's not being clear. And so that means that we're just going to go elsewhere and start over. That's how that works. So we're either going to be a faithful encounter uh, for them, meaning, excuse me. A, a catalytic event, something that activates them. If you learn a lesson and you don't have access to us anymore, take that lesson to your new relationship or we're going to be an affirming person. So the, we're either going to activate their soul or their consciousness because we're soulmates. Soulmates don't always get together because they're on some stupid-ish. They, they have some kind of narrative in their mind, something stupid. They're, um, they're influenced by fears, feelings, or what other people are saying. That That's odious opinions. That's what that means. Let me... I was foolish to believe the opinions of others. It might not have been people are ta around talking about us right now. It can be that whatever their mother said to them when they were in their developmental years or whatever, you know, family bigotry that they inherited. You know, it doesn't always have to be an actual conversation with our name in somebody else's mouth. It could be the general consensus. I was foolish to believe the opinions of others. I shouldn't have trusted my heart more than what others thought about our, I should have trusted my heart more than what others thought about our connection. Please forgive me for doubting our connection. Um, that's easier to tolerate than um, being too scared to approach because that that that's annoying. So when you get gl um, gluttonous gossip and odious opinions, something's really, really wrong. They need to heal their inner child because they need acceptance, affirmation, affection, adoration, appreciation from the external world. You That means you're not right with God. God will tell you you're right all the time. The world will tell you you're wrong all the time. And when you're not aligned with God and you have your soul family and soul tribe around you, it's the devil out around you then, period. The only way to cast the devil out is by filling that space the devil's trying to take up with divine beings, meaning get yourself a spiritual friend, get yourself a spiritual sister, get yourself a spiritual companion, get yourself a spiritual community, get yourself some spiritual work. Otherwise, the devil's too close. That's just how it works. I'm sorry. That's how it is. That's how, I'm sorry. That's what's up. So there's too many dark little demons around you and you stuck on stupid. You look as stupid after stupid being stupid. This inner child healing, you waiting too much for other people to say what's up. And you're not authentic. You're not authentic even with yourself. There's parts of you that have yet to be realized because you're used to rejection or being labeled as inappropriate. And this person is a reactive person. They keep going to other people, talking about the situation, getting the wrong advice because they're not clear on what they want. So at this present most particular moment, we can't pursue this person. We can't go to him. Hey, boy, I know you like me. What's up? Why? because it'll be a false claim. They can't offer us everything. They're unsure. They need to be the one to be like, oh, hey, this is some stupid ish that I'm doing. So they're overly critical. They're perfectionist. They're uptight, shrewd, petty, and judgmental right now. And my life all planned out, focusing on my five-year plan, but then I met you and everything changed. I did not know how to rearrange my life for you. I should have learned to compromise. Coulda, shoulda, woulda, homie. Don't be shooting all over the place. That's a mess. So now they're going through a blow up. They're feeling unstable or plagued by either addictions, fears, or depression. They're getting into trouble and it's catapulting and snowballing because they're a false flame. They probably also got distracted with somebody else, but that's over. They're walking out of it. Eight of cups full. They're looking to get to break free from somebody, but they're they're dealing with somebody. They might be paying a bill or two for the, the old person. But time is ticking. So um, time is either moving too fast, too slow, or not at all. But time is also difficult to calculate. They're hoping that we're patient, but don't tell a woman to wait. That's the thing. Don't Don't do that. And they're in their free will right now. So the universe is telling them, hey, 
here's some destiny for you. And they're like, okay, well, I'm on a different timeline. I'm on a different plan. I know better than the Lord. Okay, you may do very well for yourself, but if you're a divine being, the Lord's always going to do better for you than you can do for yourself. We're down here in the third, fourth dimension. God is in the seventh, eighth, ninth dimension. So you're not going to know everything the Lord knows. And that just means you need some strength, courage, and wisdom because we're already separated. We might not have a large physical distance, but there's space between us because they're difficult differences. And um, they're juggling, but it's keeping them unawakened because they're lost in illusion, delusion, confusion because they're sitting there thinking about us. So fall, fall is um, only has a couple more months. So they have until about December 21st if they're in Northern Hemisphere. They have six months from the, okay, so it's not, it's because I was hearing that this is going to happen quickly. So they have a couple months to get it together or it's over. They have until December 21st. Or they will be snatched away. They might not even have until December 21st. They may have up until November 6th. Because if, 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 November through December rolls around and they don't, we're going to get a new, a whole new start. Because did you see before we were rebuilding? Because we've been praying to the Lord since June 21st. Because this was a dark night of the soul. And it was supposed to happen right now. So if it doesn't happen within the next three months, we're going we're gonna to be attached. We will end up in a connection. And that's a period point blank. So Here's how the story ends. Um, this person's gonna need to grow out of that, wrap that cycle up and offer, make a love offer, okay? So that we can work on a connection because something's hidden and something's out in the open. They might think that we don't like them because they're fearing rejection and we put down a boundary and they ran away. They're expecting us to chase them too, five of swords, but they're the runner, seven of swords. So they can F up off. They can go find something to do because this is the second five in a row. So they want us to be dull, boring, basic, petty, bottom of the barrel with them. That's a no. And there's nothing wrong with that. That means they're unhealed, unawakened. It's already said that, poor baby. But that, that's just a no. They need to have a discernment and clarity about what they want, and they need to be able to speak that queen of swords. The queens are demure, but the queen of swords and the queen of wands will speak their mind. And it's mutual. We're mutually bored. They're unhappy with their life, and we're not happy with how they approach us. And uh, uh, confirmation, how they come towards us is unacceptable. It's been an honor and a pleasure to serve. Thank you for allowing me the privilege to do so. If anything I said resonates deeply with you, go ahead and like, comment, share, subscribe, leave a review, book a session, send a donation. This is about being loving, caring, and kind. Coming to us and having us shower nurturing energy over you, over another person, they come into... Um, the love of the divine, the unconditional love of the divine. That's the Queen of Cups, Regina de Copa. So this is about um, compassion, which usually is the King of Cups, but here it's the Queen of Cups. The Queen of Cups is tolerance. The King of Cups is compassion, but um, it's because somebody is coming towards us. We're at a crossroads right now. We're dealing with a twin. This is twin flame soulmate energy right here. They know who we are, but that we don't know who they are yet. And we might know who they are in real life, but not how they feel. And then here's the four of wands, which is the 11-11 card. Yeah, and they might be overwhelmed, anxious, or they might be finishing up their, you know, letting people out of their life or, um, you know, getting rid of, trimming the fat, getting rid of the people they're not serious with and then coming towards us. 
but there, I'm also getting there's a little bit of indecisive. See, we're sitting in the Six of Wands and we started with this. We're in the better energy. They're indecisive. They need to know what's up with us. And it's not our job to chase somebody down and volunteer information. That's some stupid ish. But again, we might share some type of coworker or community or, or apartment building or, or whatever. I mean, this checks a lot of boxes. It could even be anything from a bowling group to the neighbors. If you live in a large complex or gated community, it could be the family, especially family of origins. It could be the hometown. It could be the high school alma mater, college alma mater. So that's what I'm getting here. That they feel rejected and we feel bored. And they're gonna come through figuring out what to do to make it happen. But they're resorting to some kind of tactic. Any eight with the moon means a tactic. If there's a double eight, it means a, a spell. So we don't have eight back to back, but we have eight of wands, king of wands. So they might try to do some kind of candle or it's it's a candle. They're they're burning a candle. But the thing is, it, they're just sending us energy and we're using it for other things because they didn't say that they wanted us. So we're not waiting. We're not we're not checking and thinking about them because they they don't seem to be thinking about us, but that's not true. They are. Another reason for the seven of swords, and that might be what makes them come towards us when they feel ready. But see, I'm not going to sit here on the back burner waiting for a man. I don't know what kind of crap a person would be smoking to think that. And they are a little bit of a diva. Queen of Wands is describing them, unless they have a Leo moon or a Taurus rising, and that might be true because the Taurus card is out. They're a little bit of a diva. Or they could be waiting um, for some kind of debut of their power. So they might need to take a step down, take a step up, or resolve a conflict with another person, or um, get rid of that person. And I don't know why I'm keep reading. We had the... Um, World card out. So we have a double eight. Somebody feels rejected and they're wanting to fight. They're wanting to fight us so that they can get some type of creation because they, they've been festering in some kind of energy and I'm not getting bad. Let's hope the devil's not on the bottom. It up. Oh, no, that's manipulation control. Now, on one hand, we didn't see something. They came towards us and we shooed them off. We didn't recognize that they were trying to feel comfortable enough to make a love offer or something like that. The King of Cups. And I, I just saw the Two of Cups. The Nine of Cups, Two of Pentacles. That's a, and the Nine of Pentacles as well. That's a double... I just saw the two of cups. That's a double nine. So the thing is, we're secure in the self. We don't need nobody. Not that we don't want somebody. And the king of cups came back. That was the knight of cups. Okay. King of cups and nine of cups came back. So they are coming from the heart. And they're feeling very sensitive. So you see here how we're sitting on a throne? You have to approach us correctly. You're approaching the throne when you approach us. That's the superior. And there's some kind of um, rules, regulations in the universe. So the universe is saying, listen, homie, either be an alpha or fall on your sword, meaning like you've got to go up to the female and you've got to just say what's alive in you and you, you've got to let the cards fall where they may. And see, the energy just got really beautiful. Jupiter, Jupiter, Jupiter. Oh, my gosh. With the Queen of Cups. That, 
That's it. So compassion. We need to be loving and compassionate to everybody, even if we have to put a boundary. Because they don't, they want to know they have options. They've already come towards us one time. They're going to try one more time. And we've got to be in a loving, caring, and kind energy unless somebody's stepping on our boundaries. And here's the deal. Like, I'm working with women on this. Do not spend your time, energy, effort, and attention explaining yourself to somebody. We shouldn't need, especially as a female, we shouldn't need to explain our position to somebody. Say what it is we're looking for or say what the standard is to me and go on about the business. Don't sit there and explain or give examples, especially if it's a woman dealing with a man. That's not how that works. The woman decides what happens and the man decides how it happens. Meaning we need food on the table. The man's got to figure out where to get the money for the food, get to the store, get the food and bring it home. This is the woman who's going to cook it and the woman who said we need food. And that's an arbitrary example. It's really how it works energetically and from the heavens on down to the earth is the the female energy has more of the intuition. So meaning they practice the discernment and men practice the execution or women practice the discernment, men practice the judgment. Meaning a woman can say something's wrong the, the man will go and figure out what's wrong and, and until the woman is like, okay, it's better now. Does that make sense? And she might not know what is this weird feeling is that's saying something is wrong. The man will go and open the front door and make sure that the tires are on the car, not deflated, and make sure that nothing's been stolen, that the house hasn't been graffiti. Does that make sense? And then we'll close the door, lock it, and then five minutes later, some random hobo off the street will try to open the door and it won't be open. It's been locked since the last five minutes. And it was the woman that, that was saying, hey, something's wrong. Little did she know her intuition was saying, hey, in five minutes, in 300 seconds, somebody's going to try to enter this house. Does that make sense? So that's how the energy works. And of course, hello, 2024. We're in a, a, an emerging time. So, you know, the energy, the gender dynamics, it's fluid, of course, but that's how the energy expresses itself universally. The feminine energy discerns, the masculine energy judges. The masculine energy goes off what he sees. The feminine energy goes off what she feels. Does that make sense? So the invisible world makes a lot more sense to the feminine. The man doesn't know what to do with the, with the invisible world. And you see, that's what we need to align this twin flame situation. Twin flame situation, temperance and lover's card. That's what we need to bring things into alignment. Justice. Okay, so it's been an honor and a pleasure to serve. Thank you for allowing me the privilege to do so. This this is called Queen of Cups, so it's, it's basically compassion. That's what this is saying to call it. Uh, Queen of Cups normally means tolerance. King of Cups means compassion. But that's not what it is today. Today, it's, it's compassion. Okay, this is the Ten of Cups, clarified by the Ace of Cups, Queen of Cups, Nine of Cups, Two of Pentacles. So um, this is what it's going to be called, compassion. It's been an honor and pleasure to serve you. Thank you for allowing me the privilege to do so. Bye, honey. Like, comment, share, subscribe, leave a review, book a session, send a donation. Bye.